Quiet, man. The microphone admin. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you have it. So here they see the council are already looking on before we've before I've even began preaching. See if they're making issues about the sound. Men and women, men and women of Leeds. Uh, my name is David, and I'm a Christian preacher. And I'm down here today with Brother Edmund and we're down here to uh, preach the Word of God to you. Uh, it says this, men and women, in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10 and verse 45, it says, For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Now the Son of Man is Jesus. This is a title that the Lord Jesus uh, gave himself and used during his life upon earth, the Son of Man. And he says, for even the Son of Man did not come to be ministered to, or did not come to be served but to minister or to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Wow, what a saviour. The Lord Jesus Christ, men and women of Leeds, he left his throne above. He left heaven, his powerful throne above and came into this world below. And as he lived and as he walked among us, He lived a life of service, a life of servitude. He humbled himself and served others. Maybe he used the term son of man because his heart was towards man and for man. But yes, he came to serve. He came to give his life as a ransom. Do you know what the word ransom means? It's the price paid uh, to release a captive or someone who's been taken hostage. And um, you know, you might think of the Taliban or you might think of uh, criminals in Mexico who kidnap people, who take people hostage. And um, they want a ransom paid. They want money uh, so that ransom money so that that person can be released from that captivity well the Lord Jesus Christ give his life as a ransom give his life as a ransom his own life his own death upon the cross his suffering and death upon the cross was a ransom men and women it was a price paid his own blood so that those who are captive to sin can be set free. They can uh, be rescued. And that they, men and women, can be saved. Hallelujah. So yes, we're down here today, men and women of Leeds. We're down here today 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to tell you about the Saviour Jesus Christ. The one who laid down his life. The one who gave his life to save men and women from their sins. Now it says in the Bible, in fact, these are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, Truly, truly, I say unto you, whosoever commits sin is a slave to sin. You see, if you are not living for the will of God, doing the will of God, but you are living for self and self-gratification, you are a slave to sin. You are in bondage to your sin. But the Bible says, He who the Son sets free shall be free indeed. So we're down here to tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We're down here to tell you about the one who gives his life as a ransom for many. Because when you believe in him, you will be set free from the bondage of sin, set free from the captivity of sin, to be reconciled to the living God, the holy God of heaven. Hallelujah. So it also says men and women in the Bible, it says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, men and women. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So if you live a life of sin, if you continue in sin, all you can expect is death. And that death is an eternal death. That death is to be eternally separated from God in the lake of fire. Now, the God of heaven and me and Edmund do not want that for you. God doesn't desire for you to perish. But if you continue in sin, you shall perish. And that death is an eternal death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that's what we want for you. That's what we want for the men and women of Leeds. We want you to receive the free gift of everlasting life. We want you to receive the free gift of eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. Let me just tell you some things about the living God. Now there's only one God, creator of heaven and earth. He is personal. He is righteous. He is holy. He is just. He is pure. He is merciful and gracious and kind. And He is a God of judgment. He is a God of wrath. He is a God who can be brought to anger. His anger is righteous anger. In fact, it says in the Bible, men and women of Leeds, it says, it says that God is a just judge and He is angry with the wicked every day. Angry with the wicked every day. So the living God, men and women, who is present here right now with us he is angry with the wicked every day all who have their back turned to him all who are continuing in selfishness in self gratification and sin God is angry with you and God 
commands men everywhere to repent. Because he's fixed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man that he has ordained. And that man is Jesus Christ. Who is the mediator between God and man. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So yes, men and women, the Bible says that that sin is the transgression of the law. To sin, men and women, means to violate the moral law of God. And that's what you do in your life. When your back is toward God, you've got your back to God, you live a life of breaking His law transgressing his holy law transgressing his moral law God men and women is a holy God he is righteous holy righteous pure and when you sin you violate his moral law you violate his holy law Now it says in the Bible, it says, it says it was said by those of old, you shall not murder. But I say to you, whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. See, the living God of heaven he sees right into the depth of your heart. He sees the intent of your heart. I was reminded about the time when God flooded the earth. It says that God looked down and saw that the wickedness of man was great in all the earth. And every thought and intent of the heart was only evil continually. Oh, what a God, men and women of Leeds. A God who looks down from heaven and sees right into the intent of your heart. Sees right into the depth of your heart. Knows about your motives. He sees the motives of your heart. And we see that God flooded the earth. He wiped man off the face of the earth with a flood but saved Noah and his family. But yes, it's not just the actual uh, act of taking the life of an innocent person that violates the moral and holy law of God, men and women of Leeds. No. But whosoever is angry with his brother shall be in danger of the judgment so God sees uh, that anger that unrighteous anger when you are angry with a person even though that person has not done anything that would justify you being angry with them yeah but God sees that unrighteous anger and in the eyes of God that unrighteous anger, angry with somebody without a cause, is seen as murder in the eyes of God. God sees right into the depth of your heart. Sees right into the depth of your heart. Sees the intent, sees the motive. He sees the, the evil thoughts. He sees the evil motives of your heart. And this makes you guilty. This makes you condemned in the eyes of the living God. Jesus said, it was said by those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, whosoever looks at a woman to lust for her has committed adultery with her in his heart. Men and women, when you look with lust, when you men look at women and lust after them in your heart, when you see a woman walking down this street, showing off her buttock, showing off her cleavage, showing off her body and you turn 
with pervy eyes to look her up and down, to fill your eyes, to fill your mind full of that woman's form. You must understand, in the eyes of God, this is adultery. And it's the same for you women. Because it's not just men who look with lust. Women look with lust at men. Unfortunately, men look with lust to men. And women look to lust with uh, women also. And this too seriously violates the moral and holy law of God. God said men and women. He says, You shall have no other gods before me. You shall have no other gods before me, said the living God. The living God, the one who created you, the one who given you life and breath and all things, he is a jealous God. Not jealous in a an ungodly and wicked way, but jealous in a godly way. Jealous the way a husband would be jealous if his wife was becoming interested in another man. But God is a jealous God. And when he sees the men and women of this world, when he sees the men and women of this world going after false gods, bowing down to idols, this angers God. Many people in this nation and the world bow down to false gods. Whether that's in a temple, whether that's in a mosque, whether that's in your home, they bow down to false gods. And this is idolatry. This is sin. And the Bible says that idolaters shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived about this. It's only those who worship and follow the true and living God of heaven. It's only those who will inherit the kingdom of God. It's only those who will be with God forever in paradise. So God, He calls out to the men and women of Leeds today. He calls out to you to repent. Because He's fixed the day in which He will judge the world in righteousness. By the man that He has ordained. And that's Jesus. And you must believe in the one who gave His life as a ransom for many on the cross. You must believe in the one who died and rose again. Because without Him, there is no salvation for you. There's no salvation outside of Christ. There's no heaven for you outside of Christ. You must come to Christ to receive the free gift of eternal life. The Bible says you shall not take the Lord's name in vain. He will not leave him unpunished who takes his name in vain. Now it is a trivial thing in the minds of the men and women of Leeds and other cities that it's a trivial thing in your mind that using the title Christ as a curse word using the name of Jesus as a curse word saying oh my G-O-D blaspheming God it's a trivial thing in the minds of many people but it's not trivial in the eyes of God it's a very serious thing to use the name of God in a way that would dishonor Him. And God, men and women, the living God, He calls out to you today to come to your senses, to repent, to believe in the Savior Jesus Christ. It also says in the Ten Commandments, you shall not murder. It's what it says. You shall not murder. Men and women of Leeds, do you understand that abortion is murder? 
Abortion is murder in the eyes of God. It's a grave sin in the eyes of God. This angers the holy God of heaven to see a nation that murders innocent babies in the womb, to look down and see a nation that murders innocent babies in the womb. This angers the living God. To see a nation of men and women who agree with abortion, who support abortion. I've been baptizing you a cunt. This is evil in the eyes of God. You're fucking evil in the eyes of God. <laughs> and the women of this nation say things like, my body, my choice. Well, the choice that you make often is a very bad choice. And if you make the choice to kill an innocent baby in the womb, if you make the choice to kill an innocent baby in the womb, you must recognize that you've made a choice to murder somebody. You've made the choice to kill another human being, to kill and take away somebody else's life. To remove that life from the earth, that that life does not have the same opportunity that you had. It's wicked, it's evil, it's wicked. Do you understand that 99% of abortions that happen in the world are done simply because the woman does not want to have a child? If you don't want to have a child, if you don't want to have a child, don't have sex with another man. How? What about the woman that got raped? What about it? What about it? What about it? Still shouldn't kill the life. Still shouldn't kill the life. Why should a baby die because a woman got raped? Why should a baby be killed because a woman got raped? No. And that excuse is lame. 99% of abortions that happen in the world happen happen because the woman simply doesn't want to have a child. If you don't want to have a child, don't have sex. Because when you have sex, women, get con women will conceive in the womb. And a pregnancy will take place. And then a baby will grow in the womb. Well, I hope not. I hope that you don't do that because that's disgusting. That is disgusting. You are a studier. You're getting no money for this. You need to get right with God, young lady. You need to get right with God. You need to get a woman and have some actual decent sex. The Bible says, the Bible says, well, I'll let you know, young lady, that I'm married. If you look at the ring on that finger, I have a beautiful wife. Thank you very much. But let me tell you this, the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Do you know what fornication is, young lady? Tell me. It's pre-marital sex. I'm all for it. I don't give a shit. How many young people, how many people here today will engage in pre-marital sex? Every fucking body. Who the fuck cares? Do you know that the Bible teaches? The Bible teaches. If a man engages in pre-marital sex, he is a whoremonger. And do you know if a woman engages in premarital sex, she's practicing whoredom. Are you women? Are you women proud of practicing whoredom? Yes. Do you not understand? You're supposed to remain a virgin until you meet your husband. You men and you women. 
You're supposed to remain virgins until you meet your husband and your wife. And then, and then your bed will be undefiled. But if you engage in pre-marital sex, your bed is defiled. It's unclean. It's dirty in the eyes of God. Happy on this sofa then. Jesus said, be careful guys, I, I know which company you work for, okay, and you're on camera, okay. Jesus says, it was said by those of old, you shall not commit adultery, but I say to you, whosoever looks at a woman to lust for her, has committed adultery with her in his heart. Guys, have you been looking at girls walking up and down today? Yeah, looking at their buttocks, looking at their cleavage, filling your heart and mind full of the form of that woman. How do you feel that in the eyes of God, it's adultery? How do you feel that it's adultery in the eyes of God? Yeah, are any of you guys married? Yes, I'm married. So, men and women, there's right and wrong with God. There is sexual morality and there is sexual immorality. Can anybody have a guess what is sexual, sexually immoral in the eyes of God? Sex between heterosexual couples in marriage. That's what's moral in the eyes of God. And everything outside of that, everything outside of that is sexual immorality. Yes, King, you yes. say it. I've already discussed fornication, and many of you who are here today have already admitted that you engage in fornication. Okay? So there's heterosexual sexual immorality and there is homosexual sexual immorality. For example, if a man lies with a man, the way a man would lie with a woman, it is an abomination to God. Homosexuals and sodomites shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible reveals in Romans chapter 1 that lesbianism, women on women, this men and women, this men and women is unnatural. This is unnatural and it's vile passion in the eyes of God. Is there anybody here who engages in lesbianism? Is there anybody here who engages in man-man homosexuality? This is grave sin in the eyes of God. And God calls out to you to repent. God calls out to you to repent. To change your mind. To change your mind. To change from practicing perversion to practicing holiness and righteousness and purity. So men and women, there's, there's right and wrong with God. How many of you have heard of the Ten Commandments? How many can you name, young man? Come and try in the microphone. No? Try your best. How many can you name? Okay. So it says in the Ten Commandments, it says... You shall not murder. What's that to do, with sex? do you understand that abortion is murder in the eyes of God? Oh, give it up, man. Taking the life of any innocent is murder in the eyes of God. Does anybody here right now, okay? have the courage to come and ask a question. Does anybody have a question? Do you? 
Come and ask a question. Have you ever had decent In the microphone, come on. Come on, be brave, don't be a coward. Don't be a coward. Okay. Let's just lay down some ground rules. Turn up a minute. No, no, I'm preaching no, just no. now. Yeah, you need to preach. <laughs> no, no, this is no, this no. is free. This is public. No, no, this is no. public. It isn't. This is public. Man. This is public, this, okay? This is public. It's no, public no. And the public this, don't is this is say. all public, okay? No, okay. Yes, it is. Go and speak to a police officer. I'll speak to a police officer when they come. Okay. Oh, yeah. Men and women of Leeds. Let me tell you, my name is David. Hi, David. I'm a Christian preacher. I'm down here today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to preach the Word of God, to preach the Bible, to tell you about the Saviour, Jesus Christ, who died upon the cross and rose up again from the dead on the third day. To tell you that Jesus, to tell you that Jesus gave his life as a ransom. Jesus gave his life as a ransom for many. Jesus give his life as a ransom. Okay? Does that mean anybody that doesn't believe in Jesus will perish? If you don't believe in Jesus, you'll perish. Yes. If you don't believe in Jesus, you will perish. Okay. So, let's do a test, okay? Jesus said, says in the Ten Commandments, it says, you shall have no other gods before me. Put your hand up if you worship a different God to the God I worship. Put your hand up if you worship Allah or you worship a Hindu God. You must understand that this is sin in the eyes of God. It's idolatry. It's sin. Do you have a question? It has to be in the microphone, do you mind? Right, I'll just, I'll just lay down some ground rules and I'll take a question. So men and women of Leeds, okay, let's just lay down some ground rules, okay? Um, this is Great Britain, we have freedom of expression, we have free speech, we have human rights. We have freedom of speech, we have right to assemble, we have freedom of religion, okay? Christianity has been preached in this nation for 2,000 years. I'm here to dialogue. I'm here to take questions. I'm here to answer your questions, okay, the best I can. Okay, this gentleman has a question. Do you, what, what's your name, young man? This is Lewis, men and women. And Lewis is going to ask the preacher a question. Okay, Lewis. Right, so you know the seven deadly sins, yeah? <laughs> pride is one of them. Not wanting someone to worship another god, isn't that pride? No, the reason, the reason isn't pride for God to not to worship any other god is because God is the only God. He is the only true and living God. All the other gods are idols. All the other gods are idols. Yahweh. So, if it's a God, why one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. I'll just answer his. I'll take your question next. Listen, 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 listen. I'll take your question. I'll take. Can, can I answer this? Got me. I'll answer one question at a time, but I'll really take your question. All right. But I'm going to answer his question. Right. There's only one God, and He is the Creator and Maker of all things, right? He is the creator and maker of all things and God is a jealous God. Mankind has made up gods, idols, false gods and bow down and worship them, okay? God doesn't want people to worship false gods and idols. God wants men and women to worship him and adore him because he's our creator, he's our maker, okay? I'll, I'll take yours next, okay? Do you want to ask your question? You I'll take your question. Are you saying I was brought? Edmund, will you talk to this guy? He's already spoken to you over the internet. Over the internet, he has. 
Okay. Yeah, you're preaching lies. I was brought up in Catholic Children's lies. Dome and was abused. To do with this book. There's abuse in every society and there's more abuse goes on in churches than there's anywhere else. Why? And that is in God's where's name. The, where's the right. where's your Bible? Okay, good question. Where's your book? Good question. Where is your book? Does it where not say Good question. Uh, excuse me, you're being a bit disruptive. You're being a bit disruptive. We are having an orderly conversation. You're a father of lies. That's what you are. This guy is a Hebrew Israelite. He's part of a cult. He's part of a cult, the Hebrew Israelites, okay? I'm going to answer this guy's question. Okay. I'm going to answer this. Mate, you're getting in the way of the gospel. Demon. You're getting in the way where's of the, the gospel book? going out. So where's the book? You're getting in the where way of the gospel. The gospel? Where is the book? I rebuke I you. You enemy of righteousness. You where enemy of righteousness. Right. You enemy of all righteousness. Right. You child of the right. devil. Yes. Enemy of all righteousness. Deceiver. Liar. Deceiver. It's from your own mouth. You're not, a, you're not of the tribe of Benjamin. You've been deceived. Right. And what tribe are you and from? And brainwashed. Is that right? Yes. Says you, you're yes. a liar. Yes. And you're a hypocrite. Ultimately. And I can tell you with the book. No, no, I'm not going to continue preaching. You, you don't have any authority to stop me, okay? You're not PCOs and I'm not going to stop preaching, okay? Right, okay, I'm going to okay? right. okay, answer this gentleman's question. Why don't you have some respect? Do you know what? This guy can't gather a crowd. This guy can't gather a crowd. He stands up there, everyone walks past him. What he's doing, he's taking the opportunity. Oh, dear. Right. We are to obey God rather than men. I'm going to answer this guy's question. Okay. I'm going to answer this guy's question. So, this guy asked a good question, okay? But this guy's disrupting it. Okay? Mate, isn't he disrupting the question? All right, okay. Where's your book? Anyway. Right, thank you. Okay, thank you. One at a time, okay? Right. Get off that stage, man. You're a demon. You are a devil. Listen. Liar. I've told you, you're a child of the devil, an enemy of all, an enemy of right, all righteousness. Okay, you need to repent and believe in Jesus Christ. Okay, men and women of Leeds, I'm just going to continue preaching. I said there, Jesus said, Jesus said, liar. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm happy to ask questions, but he needs to shut up, really, doesn't he? You know what I mean? Listen. Listen, okay. Okay, men and women. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer that guy's question because I like to have all that and what I'm doing, okay? The truth is, pedophiles and perverts will find any institution they can to hide so that they can do their wicked things right i'm not a catholic but the reality is such individuals have hid in the roman catholic church and did terrible wicked things okay but i'm not a catholic okay i'm not part of the catholic church i'm a born again christian okay the bible says men and women it says jesus says that he give his life he give his life as a ransom for many. He give his life as a ransom for many. The Lord Jesus Christ, men and women of Leeds. The Lord Jesus Christ give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus laid his life down on the cross. Give his life on the cross as a ransom for many to set you free. Now, does anybody else have a question? Whip it out! Get the real one out! That's now this, this lady has a question and it would be good if people would have some respect for this lady's question because I want to listen and I want to do my best to answer, alright? Okay, what's your name? Megan. Men and women of Leeds, this is Megan. And Megan has a question for the preacher. If you say people can express themselves, 
what is, is other than the fact of it being a sin, your thing alleged, about being against gay, lesbians, pansexuals, what is your reason? Right, okay. Other than the fact that it's okay, Megan is answer, ask, asking a good question, okay, because she's making reference to me talking about freedom of expression, okay? Yes, I'm expressing myself um, today by using free speech, freedom of expression according to the law, okay? But when it comes to sexuality, in the eyes of God who made us, there is right and there's wrong. There is morality and there is immorality. So let me tell you, okay? God, God, God is the one who created sex. God created sex and he created it for procreation and for enjoyment by heterosexual married couples. You see, God, he made, a, he made a man in his image and his likeness. His name is Adam. And God made a woman. Come down. Are you arresting me? Do you want to get that? Get that. 